to look at a mentality. He did a fantastic podcast that I saw the other week yeah. about Tifo football. Is that psychological and mental side of the game something that obviously it does interest you because you spoke about it? Yeah. Something that you want to explore later down the line, that avenue? Um, well, it's something I've explored already. It's um, it's uh, something I I uh, I did when I was at Norwich, which I spoke about in the podcast, um, which changed my life on and off the pitch. So it's something that I think personally that is massively missing in the game. Um, we we train every other aspect of our of our game. We train our bodies. We train um, our technique. We train everything, but no one ever trains what goes on upstairs. And uh, ultimately, that that makes all our decisions for us. And you get asked a question on these courses that. And me and the gaffer and people have done like what comes first, like or sorry, not what comes first. Who who makes you decide whether you're going to run or not? Is it the coach or is it the player? And ultimately, it's always the player because if you don't want to do it, you don't do it. So I just find it's a massive part of the game that's overlooked, and uh, it's something that, um, especially nowadays, because um, we seem to be, well, we seem to be a bunch of people that. We only ever react. We never actually. Um, we never try and work on it before. We never try and stop the cause. We always try to react after. Not how can we make it better? How can we change that? Uh, I said I spoke about it in the podcast as well. So it's affecting my eight-year-old boy already playing football. The mental side of the game. Um, so why don't we start at that age? And then by the time we get to this age, or by the time people get to first team football, they're 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 in a lot better place mentally. And uh, obviously, I know it's a lot bigger now, um, the mental health issues, because people have got more of a platform and a voice to speak about it. Um, but I still don't think there's enough being done. I still don't think there's a there's a massive avenue there that imagine you could get everyone in a better frame of mind and a more positive a positive mindset, or even just giving them someone to talk to, um, because. A lot of these guys in our dressing room and every dressing room, their life's focused around their social platform or their um, their media status. They've got their blue tick or how many people likes a picture they put on or what people says something nice about them or someone says something horrible. And obviously the only time anyone ever moans is when something bad gets said. So um, imagine if they could uh, talk to someone about it or realise that they're actually in control of their own emotions and their own uh, mindset and uh, it obviously takes a blame away as well because stop blaming other people for for your failings, it's, it's you. So it's just something that I'm, I'm keen on and something that I think that um, if I hadn't have done those years ago, uh, I most probably would have stopped playing this game a long time ago. So do you think coming into a new club with new surroundings here, you've almost been able to educate some players that might not have been aware of what you've been able to learn? Yeah, you try, you try. But ultimately, as I said, it's down to the person wanting to take that stuff on board. Like I said, it's, it's funny, like the conversations you, you hear, the conversations you're involved in, like just the lads talking about girls if they're single, like asking for advice mm -hmm. and you're just like, you hear them and go, do I actually need to give you advice on that? Because like, what you're talking about is nonsense. But that's just the society we live in, isn't it? It's, uh, it's a social media world now. So you mentioned in your podcast that the, the mental side of football is way more demanding than the physical side. Is that something throughout your career you felt has, has got easier to where you are now with dealing with all kinds of aspects in football? Yeah, well, it's a fact. I think I can't even remember the person who said it. Football's like ten percent physical, ninety percent mental. And, but we only we only train and work on ten percent physical. It's it's, it's balmy. Um but it's a fact. It's it's um, uh, it's a thinking game. It's a simple game, which gets complicated, made complicated by people. Um, but uh, for me, it's been a I, I've I've learned a hell of a lot. From doing what I did in the psychology, uh, in the in concentrating on myself rather than um, what's going on around me, and um, yeah, I think it's, it's stood me in good stead, um, especially with uh, I said doing my coaching badges at the same time. 
massively helped me because you start to learn the game from the other side and uh, you become a lot more tactically aware than what maybe you are when you're in your mid-twenties or late-twenties because unfortunately it's a very selfish sport within a team, what which is think, funny. <laughs> what do you think could be implemented then in, into clubs throughout the country? You mentioned the brain training that really helped yeah, you. I think Something it, similar to that. I think it's tough, isn't it, because financial restrictions possibly don't allow you to bring something like that in yeah. um, because maybe there's other things that get given a, a higher value um, but yeah just someone just someone in and around the building someone to um, speak to the lads or, or girls whoever it is um, and just give them something to to think about maybe um, something to learn. I know they do it in rugby. Rugby, like you sign for Saracens, for example, you you don't, um, uh, you have to take on a learning. You have to take on a learning as well. So you have to go to a college part-time and do like um, a course because they want to make you better people. They want to make you a better person and make you uh, learn and use your brain and stuff like that. And look how successful they've been over the last uh, uh However many years, Atletico, Bill Bell, I think they actually hire someone just purely. I think she's one of the best in the world. I think she may have just left, gone to Aspire, actually. Um, but one of the best persons in the world just on the psychological game. And it's for the coaches as well as the, the players. Like, for example, apparently the saying at Atletico Bell would be like, think of the things you're saying to the players when you're standing there, if you're just telling them well done all the time, mm. they're never going to actually understand when they are doing something well or not because you're just saying it all the time. Silence is as powerful as, as words sometimes and it's just it's just really interesting and that was one of the big things when I did my thing, it was think about, think about what you're doing, think about what you're saying, think about what you're thinking because all of a sudden your subconscious takes over your, uh, your actual conscious. It's interesting. Very interesting, thank you. You were one of those young lads that you mentioned yeah. some time ago. Did you have a light bulb moment over that then? Yeah, when I got released twice, um, spent more time enjoying football, uh, sorry, the lifestyle of a footballer than football itself. Mm. Um, and then changed full cycle, went to be the uh, as professional as I could be. Started looking at what people were doing. I remember at one point started taking my own pre-match food in a little tub because I'd seen someone else doing it because I thought I'd give it a go. Um, stopped going out, uh, all that kind of stuff. And then went to, so I just remember signing for Norwich and obviously I doubted myself in League One. I doubted myself in the Championship and then I got to the Premier League and obviously you're doubting yourself again. Like Obviously you've been signed, but your persona that you allow people to see. I allow people to see what I want them to see. So if people people can judge me, whatever they want, that's fine. But I know people who know me and people who and I know myself know what I am really like and about. Mm. Um, but on the football pitch you people see what you want them to see ultimately. Um, and I dealt with myself and I went to Norwich and pure meeting with a guy uh, who I rented the house off that I was living in in Norwich and he did it and it was another, I was very open, I'll try anything, me. If I think I can get a little bit better with something, I'll try absolutely anything. Um, and it was something I thought I'd give it a go, two or three of us give it a go, and yeah, it was, when you actually, it's difficult, you can't give you little snippets, but if you actually go and do something like that and you actually sit there and you're like, Jesus Christ, like, it's mental, the power, because obviously it's your power ultimately, isn't it, at the end of the day. If I want to go home now, I can go home. No one's making me be here, I want to be here, because I want to be here. And that's lovely when you hear people say, he doesn't want to be here. Well, trust me, I do, because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, and that's like that's just such a, such a small thing that ultimately you make all your own choices, don't you? Does it make you, your relationship with some of the younger players, when they are talking about girls or cars or whatever, uh, a bit difficult to try and sell it to them? And no. Do they, do no, they see they you as like, like, different? No, of course they do, but they see you as they just... I have the utmost respect, and um, I mean it's great coming in every day, and the lads 
they want to see you, they want to speak to you. I spend a lot of time from up here, a lot on my own. Um, I'll always spend time with the lads and you forget, I'm like, even like Norbs, I spend loads of time, I'm like 11 years older than him. Like, it's crazy, like what? And he's asking me questions because he wants to know. When I was his age, I was only just coming into the game. Yet when you speak to them, they think I've been in it since I was 20 years old. Well, I haven't because I come in it late. Yet he's sitting there asking me questions about, oh, I thought you had done it for ages. No, 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 I didn't even join Mill until I was 26, 27. Mm -hmm. And he's worried that this is the best it's going to get for him. Shrewsbury in League One, do you know what I mean? Like, and like, having conversations with him and saying, mate, you're nowhere near where you could be if you maybe give some things a go. Try something. Can you be a little better? Can you eat a bit better? Can you live a little bit better? Can you see um, someone outside of here to get yourself physically better? It could be anything. Give it a go. What's the worst going to happen? Because you're already where you are now. And, it's, and that's why I always try, try and say to the boys, I just say, are you, are you leaving every stone unturned to make sure you're the best you can be every day? And if I can offer advice or offer recommendations of things to do, then... Why not? So you're starting with your, your... Sorry, what's your son's name? Fenton. Fenton. You're starting with Fenton when he's eight. He's going to be a super footballer then. No, nah, <laughs> no, but that's the, that's the problem. One, he thinks he's a footballer because his dad was a footballer and he thinks that that's just... He thinks you can just choose to be a footballer. Like, that's what he thinks. Um, but ultimately, he goes to training uh, an academy now, uh, at Northampton Academy where we live. And, every, like, you can t he'll speak to me. Everything's good when he speaks to me. Never wants to feel like he's failing, never wants to feel like he hasn't done anything good or bad. Mum takes him to bed. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. I'm not really good at this, Mum, am I? I'm not really good at the skills at football because the words that the coaches are using at Northampton are affecting him mentally. So they don't realise that they're doing that. They're just talking to the kids. Mm -hmm. But when you're using words like, why can't you do this? This is easy. I can... I can uh, process that and take that in the right way. An eight-year-old can't process that. He processes as in, I'm not good enough. I can't do that. So, it's that's what I mean when I say that. Like, think of what you're think of what you're saying and how you're saying it, because you could be having an effect on someone in a negative way, but you don't realise you're doing that in a negative way. That's from a coaching point of view, mind you. Football pitch is different because it's based on emotion when you're out there. That's 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 just that's just. That's something I've noticed recently because I've not been in and around that often and now he's doing it and I'm seeing it firsthand and I'm hearing the things he's saying. I think to myself, like, yeah, an eight-year-old can't process. You tell him, I, he was eating pork the other day and he said to me, he goes, oh, can I, um, can I have some Perry Sprinkle on my, on my chicken? And I was sitting there, I was like, I really wanted to tell him, you're not even eating chicken, mate. But he'll believe and take it on board, what? What he said, because that's just that's just like they're sponges, aren't they?